Torterra is easily one of the most underrated star Pokemon in the game, and this generation gave it a huge buff in Shell Smash. Today I'm going to show you the secret tech to making Torterra a massive threat in the OU tier. Today's first of three battles is against Morrigan from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, which you should definitely join by the way, invite in the description, as it's the best place to go for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet battling. But yeah, this battle, Torterra really gets to shine with its Shell Smash set, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy. So without further ado, I present to you, the Torterra video. And the battle begins, good luck out for Morrigan, so they're going to lead off with Arcanine. As I kind of expected, I normally see Arcanine leading off, as we lead off with Dragapult. Now, usually when you see a lead Arcanine, they are Rockhead with Head Smash, Choice Scarf, or Choice Banded. So, I don't want to stay in and take a Head Smash. We can take a Head Smash, but I don't want to... Actually, I do want to. I'm going to go for a Draco Meteor. There we go. Draco Meteor comes through. And that's going to make us switch out because we have the Eject Pack on the Dragapults. So we get some massive damage off on the Arcanine, which is amazing. Switch out into Corviknight, expecting a Head Smash. And then, voila, we are golden. So let's go into Silvera. They're probably Choice Banded or Choice Scarf if they're in uh, Rockhead, like I think they are. They go for a Crunch, though. That's going to do no damage to us. Would have done a lot of damage to Dragapult if it's Banded. Um, so we go for a U-turn here. Um, we go for a U-turn here because they probably switch out. They go for another crunch. I should have gone for a roost. Should have gone for a roost. But the Arcanine goes down. It's weakened to, uh, quite a bit. Um, but I'm looking at their team and I'm thinking, you know what? Torterra really does well here. Porygon Z comes in, the Paldea champion. We don't want to take uh, any hit from this thing at all. So let's go into Clefable and get them rocks up. I think that's going to be important. So we'll go into our Clefable. Like so. Pixie comes in. There we go. They go for a Thunderbolt. That's going to bounce right off Clefable, unfortunately. There we go. Bounces right off. No paralysis as well, which is nice. No hacks. Love it. Love it. Love it. Do they go for an Adaptability Hyper Beam right now? I don't know, but I'm going to go for a Stealth Rock anyway. They withdraw Porygon Z. Are they going to go Venusaur? Venusaur's a good switch. I think they do, right? Favorite. That's got to be Venusaur, right? Metagross. Nice and shiny as well. Got to love it. Metagross is also a really good switch into Clefable, obviously. We get them a Stealth Rock up, which is going to be really useful. They don't have a Hazard Clearer, um, which is great. I love it when my, teams don't, when my opponents don't bring Hazard Clearers, because I'm just like, yes, Stealth Rocks. They're up for good. Uh, we definitely switch out here. I'm probably going to go Corviknight. I think Corviknight is the best answer to the uh, Metagross. They may go for a Stealth Rock of their own, which is fine. If they do, we'll just defog them away and we'll get Stealth Rocks up later against the Paragon Z again. But if they don't, we don't. So it's, it's, it's uh, whatever. So they go for a Meteor Mash, which isn't going to do much damage to us. It does boost their attack, though, which is kind of sucky. So Rocky Helmet does go into effect. I'm going to go for a Roost here to try and get my health back up. They go for a knockoff, which is going to KO our Corviknight, unfortunately. It does get them some Rocky Helmet chip in the process, but still, it's not its not good, that. It's definitely not good. Um, do they have Bullet Punch on this thing? That's the real question. So I'm leaning towards... They probably have Earthquake. They've got Meteor Mash, uh, knockoff, probably Bullet Punch, right? Probably. So I guess I go into our Dragapult here. They can switch in Shen Power against Dragon Pool, but I'm gonna go for a f uh, oh. I'm gonna go for a Shadow Ball because I want them to I want them to switch into Shen Pao. They actually stay in to tank the Dragon Shadow Ball. And tank it they do not. As we get no critical hits, it's just pure power from Dragapult. With Metagross out of the way, we're in a pretty good position. Shen Pao comes in. Very good play. Very good Pokemon to switch in and get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great. Sword of Ruin is going to lower our defenses, which means Ice Shard probably KOs us. I'm going to drop a Draco on it, just because why not? They go for an Ice Shard, it's going to definitely sting. Doesn't KO the Dragapult, unfortunately, for them. As we go for that Draco Meteor, which should take them out. It does take them out. Dragapult putting in the work right now. Chen Pao out of the way. They have Porygon Z. They have the, the Azumarill, and they have the Venusaur. I think, personally, we can win this with Torterra. So Porygon Z comes in. What we're going to do is, we're going to scout for the Ice Beam. We're actually going to stay in and drop a Draco right now. I am going to stay in and drop a Draco right now. They may go for a Nasty Plot. If they do, we'll just keep dropping Dracos. So Draco Meteor comes through. So minus two special attack. Still does a nice bit of damage to them. Which is great and all. They go for the Ice Beam. That's going to take out Dragapult. Now, we probably assume their choice in some way. Because they switched out earlier instead of changing up moves. Or did they change up moves? I can't remember. Either way, we go Torterra. We tear Ice. We tear ice, and then we shell smash. 
So Tatera comes through. We Terra Ice, we Shell Smash. 100% of the time. So we're going to Terrestrialize real quick. They already haven't, they haven't Terrestrialized yet. So they could still pull this back with a Terrestrialization. But I don't think they will, personally. I think the Terra Water on Azumarill. I think the Terra Fire on the Venusaur. So we just Earthquake that thing. They go for an Ice Beam once again. It's going to do no damage. Yeah, they're choice specs, that's for sure. We go for the Shell Smash. Because we didn't have a special defense lowered then, and that still did loads of damage. So they've got to be choice specs, right? We're going to get our boosted from Shell Smash anyway. And then we go straight for an Earthquake here. Or do we go Bullet Seed? I think we go Earthquake because it hits the Venusaur too. So Earthquake comes through. Porygon Z goes down. Looks like we got ourselves a little Torterra Sweepy Sweep, if we can pull it off still. Big Girl comes in. That's going to be the Venusaur, right? Let's see Azumarill. It's going to get some Stealth Rock Chip. I personally think they Terra... I think... I think they're choice banded. They Terra Water Aqua Jet. I think that's what they do. So I'm going to go for a Bullet Seed. They don't. They just they accept their fate. Torterra comes through. And down goes the Azumarill, which is fantastic. Lovely job. Lovely job. And then it's just Venusaur left. Venusaur could pull this back with a Terra. In comes the Venusaur like so. Looking amazing. It's a female one because of the seed. And we go for a Terra Blast. We 100% go for a Terra Blast here because they might not expect the Terra Blast, so they might not Terra. If they do Terra, they're going to go Terra Ground or something. I don't know. Something to take the Earthquake, right? So they're going to Terrestrialize. What are they going to Terrestrialize into? They go Rock. They go Terra Rock. So we did make the right... We made possibly the right choice by going for Terra Blast. It should do a lot of damage to them still. It's not super effective, but it should do a lot of damage. I wasn't going to go for a Bullet Seed on the Venusaur. Let's just put it that way. And that nearly takes out the Venusaur with a clean nearly KO. They go for the Terra Blast themselves. And that is definitely going to tear, tear, tear Torterra apart as it does. So Torterra did really well this game. Got a nice little Shell Smash Sweepy Sweep going on. Nearly KO'd the last Pokemon on the team, but unfortunately just got away. But now all we have to do is go into our good old fashioned Lucario and go for an Extreme Speed. Uh, which is exactly, exactly what I'm going to do. So we go into Lucario. Like so. Get him, Amoobis. Amoongus. Amogus? <gasps> Let's go for the extreme speed. They go for Protect to get some more stealth, from more leftovers recovery. Which is fine. And uh, now I'm not confident extreme speed or KO. Because they are Terra Rock, after all. And Venusaur is quite bulky. So I'm not confident extreme speed KOs now. But, you know what? I'm just going to endure them. I'm just going to endure. There we go. Endure. Let them go for their Giga Drain, whatever they want to go for. That's fine. I thought they would have Earth Power for Steel types, because Terra Rock doesn't really help against Steel types. And that Edge Quake coverage could be really good. I thought they would have Earth Power, but I guess they don't. Um, so I'm, th I'm thinking, you know what? Screw it. Uh, let's stop messing around with this Venusaur. Let's go for a Meteor Mash and KO it. Meteor Mash comes through. Down goes the Venusaur. That's going to be the game. So GG to my opponent. Uh, what's your name again? <laughs> GG Morrigan. GG Morrigan. Well, that was a wild roller coaster of a game. Torterra versus Venusaur in the end there was amazing. They did really well saving that Terra Rock until the very end for sure. I'm just lucky Lucario was there to save the day. Anyway, moving on to the next game against Pippi. Yet another one filled with Shell Smash Torterra goodness. So with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun, Pippi. They're going to lead off with Scizor as I led off with my Corviknight. Silvera. Nice and shiny. Um, let's see what they're going to do here. They probably U-turn, so I'm going to U-turn as well. They go for a knockoff, getting rid of our Rocky Helmet, which is unfortunate. They do get some Rocky Helmet chip at the same time. And uh, there we go, Rocky Helmet is gone. They also lose life from the life orb they have, which explains the damage from the knockoff. We get a U-turn off, and now we get to go into our free switch into our favorite Pokemon in the world. The absolutely smashing... Uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards Dragapult, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go Dragapult. So go Dragapult, like so. There we go. There's no way they stay in here. They always switch out here. But I'm going to go for the Flamethrower anyway, just in case. Because I haven't battled this person before, so I don't know what their mindset is. They withdraw. So they are going to make the switches when necessary. And they're going to go into my Lotic here, which is fine. My Lotic comes in. Now, I'm, I'm not going to U-turn on this thing. And let me tell you why. I'm not going to U-turn. Oh, they get a burn. That's nice. Hopefully they're not Marvel scale. But either way, that's a bit of chip every turn. 
They haven't got leftovers by the looks of it, so they might be a uh, flame orb. I'm not going to go for the U-turn because I want to. I want to. I want them to think that my Dragapult is choice, pretty much. So I'm going to use this opportunity to go into Clefable, and then I'm going to go for a Stealth Rocks and get them up. They might go into the Espeon to Magic Bounce the Stealth Rocks, but I don't think they do. They might actually. They go for an Alluring Voice though. Does no damage, obviously, because I'm Special Defensive AF. Um, we could have knockoffs, so that might deter them from going into the Espeon, which is great if it does. And then the burn's going to whittle them away little by little, which is great. So, do we assume they're going to go into Espeon here, or do they go into Scizor? I think we go for the Stealth Rock expecting a Scizor switch, or a Bastion on switch. So I think we go for the Stealth Rocks. They do go into Espeon. They go into the Espeon to Magic Bounce the Stealth Rocks. That's unfortunate. I really didn't think they would do it, because we could have knockoff, and that would have definitely stung. The Stealth Rock comes through on our side of the field, which is a real shame. And this Espeon's probably thinking to itself, hey, let's set up. Let's set up. Let's do some stuff. Um, I'm not afraid of this thing too much with the Clefable. But they might calm mine. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Corviknight, because it resists both well, it resists its stab. And it doesn't care about luring voice, it doesn't care about Shadow Ball too much. Just if the Terra Boss fire, that's gonna be annoying. That's gonna be very annoying. So, and um, point stones do it again. They go for a trick. Ah! So they ended up tricking us. What are they tricking us here? A choice scarf, but they've got no item now. So now we should outspeed. Let's go for a defog. They withdraw the Espeon. They don't want to get hurt by the defog. And they're gonna go into what? Belly Bolt? Scizor. They know. Right, so they've gone Scizor because they know we have to switch out here. So we go for a defog. Now, I think they go. I, I personally think they go for a knockoff here, expecting us to switch. So I'm gonna go for another defog. Um, just, just, just to stay in. See if they go for a knockoff to knock off this pesky choice scarf. They do. They knock off the pesky choice scarf, which is great. So now that we're not choice scarfed anymore, we can go for a roost, which would be great. So I'm gonna go for said roost now. They go for a swords dance. That's scary. That is scary right there. But we get the roost off, which is gonna be great. So that's that's fine. So with the roost healing us back to nearly full. We can go for a Brave Bird here. And I am going to go for a Brave Bird because I want to will this Scizor down. Because they're going for they're going for Swords Dancers and it's not good. It is not good. So Swords Dance comes through. We go for a Brave Bird. Nearly takes them out. In fact, one more hit from the Life Orb takes them out. So we are actually golden here. Let's go for another Roost. Close Combat comes through. It's probably going to take us out. Plus four. It does unfortunately take us out. But they are going to go down to the Life Orb. So it's not in vain. As Corviknight goes down to the Scizor, famous last words, didn't think I would ever say that in my life. And then they go down to their life orb, which is absolutely amazing. So Scizor goes down. So now what do we do? We get a free switching with anything we want, but they also get a free switching with whatever they want. I think best thing to do is go Dragapult. They go Mouse Hold. Interesting. So we go into our Dragapult, they go Mouse Hold. So... If we assume the Mouth Hold's going to ever go for a Tidy Up or something else, I should go for a Draco, right? Just to get ca take care of it, because Draco's really only hitting this thing. Yeah, let's go for a Draco. Let's go for a Draco, and if they switch out, which they probably will, then at least we get a, a Jet Pack into whatever we want on whatever they bring in. They do withdraw the Mouth Hold, which is great. Are they going to go Bastion on? My Low Tick. So my Low Tick's a great one here. Because we're going to get a free um, Drake Meteor off for a start. Which does not, not a lot of damage. They must be specially defensive. But the Eject Pack is going to activate. Which allows us to switch out into whatever we want against this Milotic for free. And I am leaning towards the Torterra. I will be honest with you. I'm leaning towards the Torterra. Torterra could really shine here. So I'm going to go into Torterra. Like so. Good old Gaia. And we're going to Terra. They haven't terraged yet, so we have to be careful. In fact, I might I might scout for that. I might scout for the terror. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here is they either switch out into something else. So I don't think the terror with the uh, my low tick, that's for sure. So I think what I think they do is I think I go into Clefable here 100 percent of the time. So we're going to we'll switch out, we'll make a double. We're just, just scouting for the terror at the moment. See if they're going to terrestrialize. 
They go for an alluring voice. So if I had gone for a shell smash, it would have done a lot of damage and confused us. So it's a good job we didn't. But now we get a free switch into Clefable. We can get a stealth. We can try and get our stealth rocks up. They probably go for a recover here and let us get the stealth rocks up. So I am going to go for them. They go for a flip turn. Are they going to go back to Espeon? Espeon would make sense. Mouse hold. Mouse hold is an interesting one. So they can just population bomb us, which is kind of scary. But it's not the end of the world. So pointed stones do float in the air, which is great. That's that's great to have them up. They probably go for a tidy up though. Probably go for a tidy up. Um, in which case we should go for a moon blast, but I don't want to risk them going for a population bomb. So I'm gonna go into my dragapult. Just gonna go dragapult because even if they tidy up, bite won't KO us. It's just it's bite. I know it's technician boosted, but it's bite at the end of the day. So we'll go into like and row the dragapult. Like so. They do go for a tidy up, which gets rid of all the hazards on both sides of the field. Which is fine. It also gives them a Dragon Dance. So that's kind of scary. That's very scary. Very, very scary. Uh, we drop a Draco 100% of the time here. They go for a Play Rough. It's not Stab, so it doesn't take us out. We go for a Draco. That should do the job with the Mouse Hold. Doesn't quite do the job. Ah. Let's go for a U-turn just in case they missed the play rough. But they actually go for a copycat. Cop mouse hold use Draco Meteor. What the heck? They've got copycat on there. Interesting. So that's a very good tactic. Can be anyway. However, we have got the Lucario with the extreme speed, which is definitely what we're going to go for here. So we'll go into Anubis. Like so, and we'll just go for a potential bullet punch so they might not terror. We'll go for an extreme speed and take this thing out. Extreme speed comes through, down goes the mouse hold, which is great. So, Lucario does actually do really well against their entire team. If we can get that Salak Berry and Joe going on, we can definitely do some work. Bastiodon comes in. Bastiodon comes in. We go for a Endure here. 100% of the time we go for an Endure here. We want to be able to outspeed that Espeon, that's for sure. We've got the Stealth Rocks up, so it, break this, it breaks potential slash. They go for a Metal Burst. I guess I just go for a Meteor Mash here, right? Yeah, I go for a Meteor Mash here, because they might go for a Body Press, but we can't go for another Endure, so we may as well go for a Meteor Mash. Get a crit. They go for a Taunt. That's annoying. So we go for another Meteor Mash 100% of the time here, because it's done a lot of damage. Meteor Mash comes through. Can we get an attack boost? We do get an attack boost, which is great. They go for a metal burst, which is going to sting. But not do too much damage, which is great. So, now we go for another Meteor Mash and hope we don't fail miserably. They are Custat Berry. And they have Flamethrower. It won't KO though, right? No, it doesn't KO, which is great. It doesn't burn either. We activate our Salak Berry from that though, which is great. Now, Reversal is looking pretty powerful as well. So we go for a Meteor Mash. Hopefully we can get another attack boost. That'd be nice. No attack boost this time. But we're plus one attack, plus one speed with Lucario. That is awesome. Belly Bolt's going to come in. I think Belly Bolt takes a reversal, no problem. But I'm going to try it anyway, because why not? Reversal comes through. Clean to it KO. But they probably take us out now with another attack. So they go for a Power Relic Charge. That takes out Lucario. So unfortunately, Lucario didn't get to do too much this game. Took out the Bastiodon, which is nice, and it done a lot of damage to the Belly Bolt. It also took out the uh, Mouse Hold with the Extreme Speed, so it did actually do a lot this game. Um, it did actually do a lot this game, so this could be a Lucario video. A, maybe like second game type thing. But the real Chef's Kiss here is going to have to be going to Torterra, so I'm going to go for a Shell Smash right now. I die out the Terra Ice with Terra Blast. They withdraw the Belly Bolt, and they're going to go into what? My Low Tick? My Low Tick's a good switch. So Milotic probably goes for a Terra here, maybe Terra Fairy or Terra Steel to resist the Bullet Seed that's coming their way. But we're not going to go for a Bullet Seed unless the Terra Flying. That could also be a thing. That could also be a thing. They might have Ice Beam as well, so I'm anticipating that by Terroring. So what we'll do here is we'll go for a Terra and then we'll go for an Earthquake because Earthquake should KO them if they Terra Fairy or Terra Steel. So we'll trash that into an ice type. That way, if they go for an ice beam, it'll bounce right off us. 
So we trust the lives into an ice type, like so. And again, if you wonder why I have Terra Ice, it's purely for like Landorus and Gliscor and stuff. Pretty much. Earthquake comes through, they didn't Terra. My low tick 100% goes down, which is amazing. So Tor Terra with a late game sweep, potentially. Because they have Belly Bolt and they have Espeon left. And I think they already Terraed. I don't think they did, actually. Espeon comes in. That thing's threatening. They normally Terra Fire. So I'm going to go for an EQ. They are heavy duty boots as well, which is good to know. EQ comes through. Espeon cleanly goes down. And now it's just Belly Bolt in the back, which could be Terra Flying or something, but I doubt it. In comes the Belly Bolt. Like so. And then we just go straight for another Earthquake to take them out. The battle was cancelled. There we go. We got them for fourth with Torterra. But absolutely amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. GG right there, PP. The Torterra just came through in the end there. What a great battle. Torterra really came through with the cleanup that game. So clutch. Anyway, moving on to our final game of the video with Torterra. We have a battle against Charlie. And I'm sure you'll really enjoy this one. It's short but sweet. So with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Charlie. So they're going to lead off with Valentineros, which is the mouse hold. As we lead off with good old Dragapult. Now, Dragapult doesn't really care for this thing at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a Flamethrower first and foremost, because I know I can definitely do something with a Flamethrower. We outspeed, obviously, because we're a Dragapult. Does over half, and they go for a Play Rough, which is going to do no damage, because it's not stabbed, um, and all that stuff. So now we're going to go for a Draco Meteor to get rid of this Mouse Hold. They actually have Quick Claw. Interesting. And they go for another Play Rough, which is going to take us right down to red. But it's fine. We go for a Draco. That's going to take out the Mouse Hold, no problem. I think they just really wanted to weaken the Dragapult because it's such a big threat. But now, we've taken him out with our Dra Draco Meteor. We're going to pop our Eject Pack because we lowered our special attack. And we're going to get a free switch out into whatever we want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch out into... I, I, I believe Torterra works really well here. I really want to believe Torterra works really well here. But I want to get the Stealth Rocks up. So I'm going to go for the Clefable. Because that Armor Rouge could be Focus Dash for all we know. I want to get the Stealth Rocks up, that's for sure. Ignean comes in, which is going to be what? The Armor Rouge? The Garganacle. Interesting. So we go for a Stealth Rocks here. No problems there. Stealth Rocks comes through. There we are. And they probably go for a Sulky, all right? Heavy Slam, a Heavy Slam! Ah! And they got a crit as well, which is unfortunate. So that is terrifying. Um, however, I'm a, I'm a strong believer in Torterra right now. I think Torterra can come in and do some stuff. I think we maybe want to go into Dragapult and weaken this thing first. Yeah, I think we go Dragapult first and we Drake and Meteor. I think Torterra can sweep here. I think Torterra can sweep here really quickly. So let's go for a Draco Meteor real quick. Drop a Draco on it. There we go. Nice 50%, which is great. They probably go for a Salt Cure now to take us out. They go for a Heavy Slam. And that takes us cleanly out. So there we go. Dragapult goes down. It's not in vain, though. Because now we can go into Torterra. We got the Stealth Rocks up. So that Focus Sash on Armor Rouge is not a thing. We're going to Gaia. And we Shell Smash in its face. We 100% Shell Smash in its face here. Get some Torterra love in there. There we go. Shell Smash comes through. It lowers the defenses, raises our offenses, like so. They go for a Hammer Arm. So they are a fully offensive Garganacle by the look of it. We now go for a Bullet Seed 100% of the time. Bullet Seed should take out the Garganacle here. They don't really have a good switch in. But we have to be worried about the... We have to, we have to worry about the Terror. We have to worry about the Terror. I think Iron Hands will Terror Flying, personally. But Garganacle is gone, which is great. Gracia Chita <laughs> comes in, the Azumarill. That thing is a threat, but I'm going to go for a Bullet Seed regardless. Bullet Seed comes through. It's going to definitely take out the Azumarill. I don't think they have anything for it, do they? I don't think they have the right Terror on Iron Hands. They don't have Flying anyway. But we've got a nice little Torterra Sweepy Sweet, which is great. I mean, maybe. They're going to Twinkle now. Who's Twinkle? Armor Rouge. Stealth Rocks do dig in, which is great. We can now go straight for an Earthquake. They may Terra, but if they don't Terra, then we're Golden. They don't care Terra. They must not have a Terra for Torterra, which is unfortunate for them. So Torterra gets a nice little sweep, which is great. Now they go into Ana, which is going to be the Tropius. 
We have to go for the terror here. So we terror ice terror blast. There we go. Terror ice terror blast should come through and take care of this thing. If I had rock blast, that'd be ideal, but I don't. Um, because I'd rather have saved the terror because now the iron hands knows if he can live a hit, he can go for a drain punch and take us out. But so terror is putting in the absolute work in this game, I will say. It's a short one, but it's a sweet one. So let's go for the terror blast. There we go. Terror Blast comes through. And <laughs> the Tropius goes down, which is great. Absolutely great. Not Doughboy comes in. The Iron Hands. Stealth Rock Chip's going to take into effect. And we just go straight for an Earthquake here. They could Terror. They haven't Terrored the whole game, though. So I'm guessing they just don't have a good Terror for it. As down goes the Iron Hands. And that is going to be the game. So pretty fun, quick sweep for Torterra. But GG... Uh, GG Charlie. That was a really short but sweet battle for real. Torterra sweeping basically their entire team like that. I just had to include it in the main video. But anyway, did you think the video was over? Nah, 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 nah. We have ourselves a bonus battle. Today's bonus battle is against Puff and his incredible sand team. So stick around till the end for the rental code of the team. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Puff. So they're going to lead off with Iron Walnut the Ferretris, as I expected, kinda. And I went into Swamp It. I, I was expecting either a T-Tar or maybe like a Cloister Leaf for the Shell Smash stuff. Um, or, or, or maybe this thing. So I want to break the, st the Sturdy. So I'm going to go for a Flip Turn here. Flip Turn comes through. There is a good chance they're Red Card, but luckily they're not. So we're going to switch out. They probably go for their Hazards here. So I'm just going to go straight for a Houndoom Switch. Just to get in before them Stealth Rocks. So we'll go into Cerberus real quick. If they go for a Body Press, so be it. They do go for the body press, expecting the Houndoom to come in, which is a good play. And um, now they're definitely going to go T-Tar. That's for sure. Because they get T-Tar in, they take a hit. And um, they go for a... They get the Sandstream up, which is going to hurt us. So we could go into uh, Serena for the Power Whip or the Swampert. I'm leaning towards the Swampert. So I am going to go Swampert real quick. And um, we withdraw our Houndoom, expecting the T-Tar to come in. And we're going to go into Swampert like so. Because it can definitely take out the, Swamp uh, the Tyranitar. Um, or we can do some serious damage to the uh, Skarmory with the Liquidation. So what are they going to go into here? They go into the Warden, which is probably the T-Tar, right? Yeah, T-Tar comes in. So that thing would have been able to take any hit from the Houndoom, and then the Sandstorm would have picked off Houndoom the next turn. So that's, that's that, that was a good play on my behalf. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but I'm going to go for a flip turn now because I know I can take a hit from this, uh, this Tyranitar. They withdraw the Tyranitar, which is fine. Are they going to go Cloister or are they going to go Skarmory? Iron Walnut comes back in. Which is fine. We obviously have no way of dealing with this thing with Houndoom not being able to switch in. But that flip turn is doing a lot of damage to a Ferretris. I will say that. Swampert is an absolute beast with the choice band. I will say that for sure. So now, leaning towards the Cleavor to get the um, the uh, Stone Axe off. Because then we can get a uh, nice and clean Stealth Rocks up. Which will break the Sturdy on that Skarmory. Break Focus Sash on the Cloister, etc. Um, but I don't really know for sure what I'm going to do here. I could go Corviknight. I am going to go into the uh, Cleavor. Cleavor does benefit from the Sandstorm having a special defense boost. Not that it really matters against a uh, Ferretris, but we'll go for a Stone Axe anyway, just to get the Stealth Rocks up. And I'm hoping this is their only Rapid Spinner. Excadrill could have Rapid Spin and so could Cloister, to be fair. But I doubt that Cloister will. They're at, the Excadrill, on the other hand, may do. So we go for a Stone Axe. It's not going to take it out. It does take it out. Never mind. I actually didn't expect it to take it out. So we take out the Ferretris. And we get Stealth Rocks up. You, you, it's a win-win. Jingles comes in, which is going to be the Coma-O. This thing is going to set up a Clangor of Soul in our face. I know that for sure. I know that for sure. So what do we do? Um, I'm leaning towards the Corviknight. So I'm going to go Corviknight because if they go Clangor of Soul, they usually Drain Punch with Clangor of Soul. Usually with Dragon Claw. And then it's like Substitute. So I'm going to go into Corviknight now. They do go for a Clangor of Soul, not a Substitute, which is great. And they're usually soundproof, so they can't be roared out um, when they're behind the substitutes. So they get that Omni Boost, which is really terrifying. I just hope they don't have Flamethrower. If they have Flamethrower, it's kind of all ogre for Corviknight. Um, but they do lose some health. Let's go for a Brave Bird and find out. They do, they do have Flamethrower. We should be able to take one, though. Yeah, we do take one, which is nice. No burn, which is great. Brave Bird comes through. And that's going to nearly take out the Como, which is fantastic. So we get some Recoil. Um, but you know what? It's fine. They actually have a berry, which is going to recover their health. It's just a citrus berry, though. Nothing like a like a wakam berry or whatever the berries are called. The figgy berry and stuff like that. Um, so now, 
If we expect a flamethrower, we should go um, Houndoom, but then the Sandstorm takes us out. Um, but it does get us a free switch in. I don't think Houndoom is doing much for us outside of... If, we, if the Sandstorm goes, then it can take out the Skarmory potentially. So it might be worth just um, keeping this thing alive. So let's go for a Brave Bird once again, just in case. They do go for a Clanging Scales, though. They probably went for that just in case we went Houndoom. Lowers the defenses, though, which is, in, is, which is good for us. Very good for us. So now, I'm probably going to have to go Serena. Serena can probably take a hit and go for a Triple Axel. I think it can take a Flamethrower, no problem. I think it can take a Flamethrower. But we also have this. But if the Bulletproof, Sludge Bomb isn't going to do anything. That's the problem. So I think it's time for Serena to come in. To be honest with you. I think it is time for Serena to come in and Triple Axel this thing. I'm fairly confident we can live a Flamethrower. I could tear a Dragon, but if they Clanging Scales, it's super effective damage. So it's like, it's not a good trade-off. When they could easily go for a clanging scale. So let's go for a triple axle real quick. So they go for a clanging scales. Just in case we tarried. We do live that. Can we hit the triple axle? We do. Can we hit it twice? We do. That's great. So Serena came through. Lived the plus one clanging scales from a Como. Which is amazing. And it got to do some stuff there. So that's great. The, the sandstorm is going to buffet it. But I'm pretty sure the sandstorm wears off the next turn. If they're smooth rock. And um, they're going to go into Blender, though. What's Blender? Is that the Skarmory? No, it's the Excadrill. So Excadrill comes in. It gets hurt by the Stealth Frogs. They probably go for a Rapid Spin to KO here. Um, but I have nothing to really take care of it in that regard. I could still use Serena for the Tyranitar. And to an extent, the Cloyster, if it hasn't got a Shell Smash up. But it could use Houndoom for the Cloyster as well. I think Houndoom is more important. So I'm going to let Serena go down here. I'm going to go for a Knock Off just in case. They do go for an EQ, though, which is definitely going to take out Serena. So they're not rapid spin on the, the Excadrill, otherwise they would have gone for it there. So, because it would have KO'd the Serena, you see. So that's good to know. They are Life Orb as well, so they can change up moves. The Sandstorm finally subsides. And then we just go into our nice and powerful Swampert. Or do we mm, or do we go into our Cleavor in close combat? I think we go Cleavor close combat, because cl close combat hurts the Tyranitar. It KO's the Tyranitar. Does a lot of damage to the Cloyster, and the Skarmory doesn't appreciate it too much either. So let's go for it. Let's go for the close combat. I don't see any reason not to. They withdraw. Are they going to go Skarmory? Probably, right? They probably go Skarmory. Airwolf the Shining Star comes in, which is fine. Get some Stealth Rock Chip breaking that sturdy. We go for a close combat. That's going to do a nice little solid 30%, I think. Yeah, about, well, about 25%. Um, lowers our defenses. And they aren't Rocky Helmet. They are, in fact, Leftovers, which is good to know. So that is great to know. Right, what do we do here? I'm I'm leaning towards a hard Houndoom switch, but at the same time, I'm not. I think I'm going to go with the Slowbro switch. I think Slowbro is a good switch here because it just, it just kind of works. So we'll withdraw our Cleavor. We'll go straight into the good old-fashioned Drip Queen over here. Like so. They go for a Rock Tomb. Oh, interesting. So Rock Tomb Skarmory to lower the speed. That makes a lot of sense, actually. But it's not going to work out too well for them here because... Um, wait, what, wait, what do they do here? Because if they go for a Stealth Rocks, then... Um, so there's a couple things they do here. They either go for a Stealth Rocks, trying to get the... Because if, if they get the Stealth Rocks up, how new dead? So we may as well go straight into Houndoom because they know that we're going to go for a chilly reception. So they're not going to bring the T-Tar in because the Sandstorm will disappear. So let's go Houndoom. Let's go Houndoom expecting the um, Skarmory to go for a Stealth Rocks or a Spikes here. I think that is the way to go. So let's go Houndoom like so. It's a bit ballsy. Could work out in our favor. They go for a Roost. Interesting. So Roost comes through. Now they may try and stay in and take this and go for a Body Press or a Rock Tomb, should I say. So let's go for that Fire Blast just to see if they do. Fire Blast comes through. They do stay in just to get rid of the Houndoom. It's going to cleanly nearly take out the Skarmory. Takes it right down to its sturdy. Do we get the burn as well? <gasps> we got the burn as well. Nice. Nice. As they go for a Spikes. Which is great. So the Skarmory is going to go down to the burn, I believe, right here. No, they get the Leftovers first. So the Leftovers is going to save them from going down to the burn. Right there, but it's still fine. Because they basically, they have to switch out here. Or not. Let's go for a Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse comes through. They let the Skarmory go down, which is absolutely fine. 
They obviously don't want to risk a Will-O-Wisp on the uh, Tyranitar, maybe. But they can bring Tyranitar in just fine now and get the Sandstorm up. So that's going to be great for them. So Warden comes in, the Tyranitar. Now, unfortunately for them, Sandstorm isn't going to take into effect this turn. So we can go for a Fire Blast and potentially get another burn. Not that I'm banking on the burn or anything, but it is a possibility. So we may as well go for it. Let's go for the Fire Blast. Fire Blast comes through. We don't miss, which is nice. Let's get some damage off. A little bit of chip damage. They go for a Stealth Rock. So Stealth Rock. Alright, so they're setting up the hazards now late game. This could matter though. This could matter because the Sandstorm takes us out anyway. There we go. The Sandstorm's going to take us out like so. Cerberus does go down after getting some nice damage off. He took out the Skarmory. I think Houndoom did pretty well this game. Houndoom definitely did pretty well this game. So... Now that that's gone, we can just go into Cleavor and close combat, but they probably Terror, right? So we should go into Swampert first. Swampert first and foremost. So All Ogre now comes in. All Ogre now comes in. Hurt by Spikes and Stones, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. We now go 100% for an Earthquake. There's no real reason not to. They may go for a knockoff. But if they go for a knockoff, they still die to an earthquake. They do go for a knockoff, getting rid of potential leftovers or something like that. They knock off our choice band though, and we go for an EQ, and that should KO the Tyranitar from there. It does KO the Tyranitar from there, so that's great. So Titar goes down, and they have weakened us a bit, so they can bring in the Cloister now and revenge kill us, no problem. Spiky comes in, that's got to be the Cloister, right? Is Cloister going to sell for an endgame sweep? I think Earthquake KOs if they Shell Smash. If they're not if they're not White Herb, but I think they are White Herb. They've got to be, right? You won't run Focus Sash Cloister on a Sand Team. So they are going to Terrastalize. What type are they going to Terrastalize into, though? Hopefully something weak to ground. Hopefully something weak to ground. They go for a Terrastalize Water. So it's still neutral to ground, which is good. The only problem we've got is this Cloister can Self and Sweep right now. Can absolutely Self and Sweep right now. So they go for that Shell Smash. And hopefully they're not white here, but they probably are. Hopefully they're not white here, but they probably are. As there's the boosts. Like so. All of the all the boosts. All the boosts. Are they white herb? They are. So that's gonna restore their defenses, which makes sense. We go for an EQ though. That's gonna still sting a little bit. Not too much, but like a little bit. So now we definitely go for an Earthquake. We haven't got a Terror that really counteracts this Cloister. They go for a Surf, so they're a special one. They're not Skill Link. Interesting. So that, well, they could still be Skill Link, but they're not in this particular sense. So um, that's great. Hopefully they don't have Icicle Spear, because if they don't have Icicle Spear, we can potentially take this thing out with a... Uh... Well, we can we can take it out with you anyway. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, um, I think Slow King is the way to go here. So we go Slow King. We haven't Terrored yet. This is the perfect time to Terror, I think. Because not only do we get Stealth Rocks and Spikes, which is unfortunate, we can still Terra, go for a Sludge Bomb. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to Terra Water. Be immune to both its stabs. It can't do anything to KO us, I don't think, unless it gets a crit Icicle Spear. Five, unless it gets five critical hit Icicle Spears in a row, we should be alright. We should be alright here. So let's go for the Terra Water. They go for the Ice Spinner, which is going to go ahead and do a lot of damage. Not really. We go for a Sludge Bomb, though. That's going to take out the Cloister, no problem. So that's great. So Cloister goes down. Cloister goes down. And all we have to do here against the Excadrill is we have to live an Earthquake for a start, which I think we can. And we have to live... We have to live the Earthquake as Terra Water so that we can go for a Chilly Reception and get rid of this Sand. That's what we have to do. Get rid of the Sand with Chilly Reception. Then Cleavor can come in and close combat this thing. So Earthquake comes through. Can we live... We don't live, unfortunately. Which means we don't, unfortunately, win the game. Unfortunately. I think Cleavor might take a, an Earthquake, but it can't take an Iron Head with Life Orb. Definitely can't take a Life Orb Iron Head. So we're going to Cleavor real quick. We're going to get some Stealth Rocks and Spikes. And I'm pretty confident that's GG right there. Which is unfortunate, but at the same time, really, really good game. It always is against Puff. Let's go for that close combat anyway. You never know. If they go for an Iron Head, that's going to definitely take us out. And that's going to be the game. So GG Puff, that was a really fun one. Really enjoyed that one. Nothing really stood out to me. So this is probably going to be a bonus battle. If you're watching this and it's a bonus battle, thanks for sticking around to the end. I really appreciate it. If it's not a bonus battle, then screw it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today's video. Feel free to use the team by using the rental code in the top right. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.